Well, good morning. What a beautiful morning it is, too. Um, we're going into the King James Bible. Oh, by the way, it's Wednesday, October the 9th. We're going into the King James Bible, book of Sec Second Samuel, or 2 Samuel, and this is uh, chapter 15. Bear, <laughs> he loves to be up here. Little bear. Okay, lay down. Not on my Bible. I want to be able to read it. Okay, here we go. Here's Bear. See, he's right there. Right there. <laughs> All right, Bear. Okay, Absalom. And it came to pass after this that Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and 50 men to run before him. And Absalom rose up early and stood beside the way of the gate, and it was so that when any man that had a controversy came to the king for judgment, then Absalom called unto him and said, Of what city art thou? And he said, Thy servant is one of the tribes of Israel. And Absalom said unto him, See, yes. see, thy matters are good and right, but there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom said moreover, O oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any suit or cause might come unto me, and I would do him justice. Wow. So remember, Absalom's been living in Jerusalem. He returned, um, but his father has not seen him face to face. And uh, he'd forgiven him, but, you know, Absalom was kind of living in, in, in a exile at home. And I guess he's kind of fed up with it. And it was so that when any man came nigh to him to do him obeisance, he put forth his hand and took him and kissed him. And on this matter did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And it came to pass after 40 years that Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go and pay my vow, which I vowed unto the Lord in Hebron. For thy servant vowed a vow while I abode at Geshur in Syria, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, then I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. But Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, As soon as you hear the sound of the trumpet, then you shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. And with Absalom went two hundred men out of Jerusalem that were called, and they went in their simplicity, and they knew not anything. And Absalom sent for Ahithophel, 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 the Gileonite, David's counselor from his city, even from Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And the conspiracy was strong, for the people increased continually with Absalom. And there came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are after Absalom. And David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise, and let us flee, for we shall not else escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring evil upon us and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said unto the king, Behold, thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth and all his household after him. And the king left ten women, which were concubines, to keep the house. And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him, and all the Cherethites, and all the Parathites, and all the Gittites, six hundred men which came after him from Gath, passed on before the king. Then, king, then said the king to Ittai the Gittite, Wherefore goest thou also with us? Return to thy place and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger and also an exile. Whereas thou camest but yesterday, should I this day make thee go up and down with us, seeing I go whither I may? Return thou, and take back thy brethren, mercy and truth be with thee. 
And Ittai answered the king and said, As the Lord liveth, and as my lord the king liveth, surely in what place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also will thy servant be. And David said to Ittai, Go and pass over. And Ittai the Gittite passed over, and all his men, and all the little ones that were with him. And all the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people passed over. The king also himself passed over the brook Kedron, and all the people passed over toward the way of the wilderness. And to Zadok also, and all the Levites were with him, bearing the ark of the covenant of God. And they set down the ark of God, and Abiathar went up until all the people had done passing out of the city. And the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the ark of the God into the city. It shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord. He will bring me again and show me both it and his habitation. But if he thus say, I have no delight in thee, behold, here am I. Let him do to me as seemeth good unto him. The king said also unto Zadok the priest, Art thou not a seer? Return into the city in peace, and your two sons with you, Ahimaaz thy son, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. See, I will tarry in the plain of the wilderness until there come word from you to certify me. Zadok therefore and Abiathar carried the ark of God again to Jerusalem, and they tarried there. And David went up by the ascent of Mount Olivet, and wept as he went up, and had his head covered. And he went barefoot, and all the people that was with him covered every man his head, and they went up, weeping as they went up. And one told David, saying, Athaphael is among the conspirators with Absalom, and David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai, the archite, came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his head. Unto whom David said, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been my father's servant hitherto, so will I now also be thy servant. Then mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. And hast thou not there with thee Zadok and Abiathar the priests? Therefore it shall be that what thing soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, Thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahimaaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them you shall send unto me everything that you can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Wow. After 40 years isn't it amazing how family can turn on you? You would think that that would be something sacred, that there would be such a bind between you. But there isn't. There isn't. Only if you want it to be will there be a bond between you. You know, you'll be... If you don't want it, if you reject it, it'll never be there and I've experienced that my, my family have rejected me and uh, because I moved to America um, I, I, I've never understood it I've never never understood it uh, my sister moved to France she moved to Africa she's been all around the world more or less and uh, nobody objected to what she was doing but I came to live in America and um, quite a few people have held it against me. It's strange. So you can see the bond, the bond for family 
is not as strong as you might think. It's something that, just like a friendship, you have to work at. There, there is no... Now, I, I would hope that there's people out there that would tell me different, that they have a great relationship with their family. But I suspect that's because they make an effort on both sides, that they maintain that closeness and that bond. Um, of course, I, by putting like 3,000 miles between me and my family, made that a little bit uh, difficult to maintain, but it, it was possible to do it and, and, and should have been easy, should have been easy. It's, it's no problem having friends on the other side of the Atlantic or the other side of the world. It's no problem having family on the other side of the world. But, um, you know, these are things that uh, we're afflicted with from time to time and we have to deal with. Can you imagine how David felt? I can. I can imagine. And when he had realized that, you know, Absalom, his son, had got all of Israel behind him, he said, you know, pfft. We gotta, we gotta go. We're gonna go into the wilderness. This was Saul all over again, wasn't it? You know, there's Absalom, big, tall, handsome guy with long hair. I mean, pretty much like Saul was, big, tall, handsome guy, stood head and shoulders above everybody else, and he was jealous of David. Incredible, incredible. Well, we'll learn. We'll learn how God abides with David, and you'll see how this turns out. For those of you that know, I can't wait to read it. <laughs> and it is, an, it, it's a good, good reading. You know, this is history, this happened. And uh, it gives us insight into the human condition, as well as how God works in our lives. And uh, that's why I love the Old Testament. You know, we get to see God the Father um, and how he manifests in our lives. So remember, he does this because he loves you, and I love you too. Have a great day. There's just a gentle breeze. Has uh, got the screens, the windows open, the screens open a bit, front doors open. You can probably hear the wind chimes going. It's just a beautiful, beautiful day. I, th I think it's probably only just in the 60s at the moment. Um, it was 59 last time I looked, so cool, yes, cool, a bit breezy, but the sun's out there and, and the stars were out there last night. It was just so beautiful. I love looking up at the stars. I love looking up at the stars. God is out there somewhere. The kingdom of heaven is going to come down on earth. It's going to come out of the heavens, which is our sky. Uh, don't forget, there's three heavens. The first heaven is our sky, our immediate. Second heaven is the universe that we can see where all the stars are. The third heaven is actual heaven where God resides. It's the spiritual heaven. Anyway, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Um, I'll speak to you tomorrow. Bye for now.